Well, everyone, the legend is back and supposedly better than ever. So the Dark Rock Pro 4, one of the best heat sinks probably ever created, is officially being replaced by these two guys, the Dark Rock Elite and the Dark Rock Pro 5. Now, I know that this review is going live a little bit later than a lot of the other content that you've seen and probably read. And there's actually pretty good reason for that because a lot of that content that you've seen up to this point is basing their testing off of older generation processors. Us, on the other hand, we're using AM5 and LGA1700, and that has led us down a very different road of a lot of retesting because it turns out that on current generation sockets, Be Quiet might have some very serious issues on their hands. Anyways, Be Quiet's goal is to take everything that was great about the Pro 4, enhance compatibility, and add some new design elements. I went into this review hoping they'd fix its one major shortcoming, performance on those modern CPU sockets, because while the Pro 4 was amazing on AM4 and older Intel platforms, it just got demolished on current processors by heat sinks that cost much, much less. And while the Pro 5 and Elite are technically different products at different price points, there are a heck of a lot of similarities too. Both use the exact same dual tower 7 heat pipe design, with those heat pipes terminating in a nickel plated copper base, which also has a small aluminum fin stack for what Be Quiet calls pre-cooling. From a raw thermal mass perspective, this design is smaller than something like the D15, though deeper than a lot of dual tower 120 millimeter coolers like the Phantom Spirit. The cooling stack also extends quite far downwards, which is probably meant to offset its lower fin density. When compared to a lot of other coolers, the spacing here is quite a bit wider in an effort to reduce static pressure from the deeper heat sinks and ultimately make it easier to drive air through them with lower RPM fans. And to be honest with you, the build quality on these things is absolutely top notch. They also both have a magnetic top cover, which pops off just like this. And there you get access to a high or low speed fan switch. The other thing is you have easy access to that center fan by simply popping off the main plate and the center fan is right there. The other thing I wanted to mention is the Elite actually has a, it's really weird for be quiet, it's a RGB glow on the top, but it's really subtle. It's very, very well done. And of course, if you don't like RGB, it can just be turned off. And that center mounted fan is a 135 millimeter unit on both coolers, which on paper at least is a great way to balance airflow and size in order to lower the overall noise envelope versus something like a 120 millimeter fan here. It's also physically smaller than 140 millimeter, so you might think these coolers are pretty compact, but they're actually not. A height of 168 millimeters makes these just as tall or taller than 140 millimeter based heat sinks like the D15, Assassin 3, and Thermal Right Frost Spirit, and just over five millimeters higher than the original Dark Rock Pro 4. That center mounted fan is supplemented by a second 135 millimeter on the Elite and a 120 millimeter on the Pro 5. And this, this is where the problems start. In order to get that speed switch to work, Be Quiet's using a custom header on both fans instead of a typical four pin. To me, this is just a senseless complication since other companies like Deepcool have figured out how to run regular headers into an onboard switch. And to add insult to injury, you can't easily replace these fans either. While the Pro 5's 120 millimeter fan uses clips, all the 135 millimeter ones, including the two on the Elite, use mounts that aren't compatible with 140 millimeter or 120 millimeter offsets. And no, Be Quiet does not provide you with any clips for standard fans either, other than that one fan on the Pro 5. And and I I, I just this, this this pisses me off so much, guys, because. What Be Quiet is doing here is completely defeating the purpose why a lot of people end up buying air coolers in the first place. And that is the ability to replace the one potential failure point on this cooler if something goes wrong with it. That ability right now is almost completely gone because there's no easy way to replace that center fan. But you know what you can't go wrong with? That's this case from Fantex. 
I like it so much, it's currently my gaming case, for real. The Fantex NV5, the perfect hybrid between a fish tank and your regular mid-tower with visuals of your components prioritized without compromising on component fitment. Put in your favorite AIO at the top or the side, support the GPU, hide the cables and enjoy the built-in lighting, all for an affordable yet elegantly matured experience so you can envy responsibly, my friends. The MV5, check it out below and please don't keep your case on the floor. Gosh. The other thing you need to take into account is memory compatibility. The Pro 5 gives you just over 45 millimeters, which is enough for most modules, but you'll need an ultra low profile kit for the Elite unless you want to haul its front fan up by a few millimeters. And actually moving it, that's actually easier said than done. So there's a rail system within this cooler that allows you to bring it up and down, but actually doing it, <coughs> it's not the easiest thing in the world. But on the positive side, what Be Quiet has done with these things is improved every single aspect of the old Pro 4's mounting system too. There's less tiny components, the center rail is now fixed in place so you don't need to pray for it to stay in place, and the installation instructions are some of the best in the industry. There's an included screwdriver too, so props to Be Quiet for that. The bigger news is what you don't get, and that's an offset mount for AM5 CPUs. They can simply be a game changer, and not including an offset option here seems a bit tone deaf on Be Quiet's part. All they needed was a few holes in the AMD mounts, and that's it. It. I normally let this slip, but these are two of the most expensive air coolers on the planet. So yeah, I'm sort of holding them to a higher standard than a $35 Phantom Spirit, which by the way, allows you to easily replace its fans. And yet you also have to take into account that most people buying a Be Quiet cooler have certain expectations too. They expect the fans on these things to be absolutely whisper quiet across every single RPM range. So let's take a quick listen and see if that's the case. One thing I do want to note is the RPM readings you see for the Dark Rock Pro 5 come from its 135 millimeter fan, since that's the only one picked up through the splitter. So obviously, Be Quiet is staying true to their heritage because these are actually some of the quietest fans across every single setting that we tried. There's no motor hum, there's no vibrations, they're just high quality fans. So I guess it sort of makes sense why Be Quiet doesn't expect you to swap these out because they're very, very high quality units to begin with. But does that translate to actual good performance? Let's check it out starting with Intel CPUs and then move on to AMD. At a relatively low 180 watts of thermal output, the original Pro 4 sat here, consistently tied or beaten by much less expensive coolers like the Fuma 3, Frost Commander, and AK620. The Pro 5 is an improvement at every single decibel point, but it's only by one or two degrees at most. So while it can beat something like the Assassin 4 at low temperatures, it 
can't come close to matching the best of the best. And that's where the Elite comes into play because it is one of the best air coolers we've ever tested here, matching the 10 year old D15 and the much, much less expensive Peerless Assassin and Phantom Spirit. Moving on to 253 watts, and this is where it all started to fall apart for the older Pro 4. The Pro 5 just demolishes its results by sometimes up to five degrees, but that only places it in the upper mid range among high performance air coolers. And that's that's a problem for a $100 product. The Elite does a bit more to justify its price since at lower decibel levels, it's one of the top five heat sinks and it beats the Pro 5 by a good amount too. So if you wanna focus on noise to performance, this is certainly one of the best right now. Our hardest test is running the CPU without any limits and it maxes out every single air cooler we've ever tested. So let's drill down into clock speeds. And it's pretty much the same story here. The Dark Rock Pro 4 obviously wasn't optimized for Intel LGA 1700 processors, while the new Pro 5 is much better, though it can still only match the $50 AK620. The Elite, on the other hand, well, at 36 decibels, it's good, but still 100 megahertz shy of where it should be. After that point, there's a struggle to keep up with competitors that cost significantly less. The best results for these ended up being in gaming. I mean, the Pro 4 did well, while the 5 does better with a laser targeting of low RPM improvements. And the Elite ends up being one of our top air coolers of all time through most of its noise range. Considering most of you will be thinking about these for gaming systems, it's good to see both handling higher ambient temperatures so well. So from the perspective of current socket Intel users, these new Dark Rocks are a clear improvement over their predecessors. And for a lot of people, I'm sure you would agree with me, subjectively, they look a lot better too. But there's an elephant in the room and that is the fact and it's something that I need to keep on hammering home again and again and again. It's $100 and $115. And the fact of the matter is that there are plenty of competitors on the market right now that perform equally or better than these coolers and they cost a fraction of the amount. But maybe there's going to be a saving grace. Maybe AM5 these things are gonna start pulling ahead. Let's check it out. The first thing I need to mention is we've decided to use Noctua's offset mounts for the U12A and D15, since new production batches will include the necessary adapters. Even if you don't have them, they're just five bucks to buy anyways. And in the easiest test with the 7600X, the older Pro 4 was, well, a complete disaster relative to its price. And sadly, I've gotta say the same thing about the Pro 5. There's barely any improvement whatsoever while the Elite hits a degree or two lower, but that doesn't help either. Be quiet, $115 cooler is no better than a $50 Fuma 3. Jumping to the 7700X shows the gap between the Pro 4 and 5 widening quite a bit, but not enough to make the new cooler look all that much better versus the competition. The Dark Rock Elite, well, that struggles too, and to give you an idea of by how much, at its 36 decibel sweet spot, it's a whole five degrees hotter than the Phantom Spirit 120SE. And finally, on the 7950X, the Elite is Be Quiet's only cooler to get under 95 degrees, and even then, not by much. So let's switch up to clock speeds again. The first thing you'll notice is that generally all the results are within 100 megahertz of one another. And yet the dark rocks are all clustered towards the bottom and remain under 5.05 gigahertz. The only exception is the elite, which goes above that point once it hits 40 degrees and beyond. Overall though, this is another terrible result. And gaming, well, that wasn't any better. I mean, sure the Pro 5 beat the four by a solid amount, but that didn't even lead to a middle of the pack result. The expensive Elite fares a bit better and it matched the Assassin 4's numbers, but that's not a compliment, guys. Deepcool's flagship has a hard time with ambient case temperatures, so its results just go to crap in gaming. Okay, so I need to pause this video right here and really level with you guys because I went into this review probably more than any other one with a little bit of bias and it ended up being a little bit of confirmation bias on my part. I was really hoping and really expecting, like I'm sure a lot of you guys were, that these new coolers would just destroy everything out there that the competition has. And unfortunately, they don't. And that bias actually led me to push the team for more testing, dozens and dozens of hours of additional testing on both of these coolers. And the results are basically what you see. We checked everything mounting pressure, humidity, motherboard bio settings, Windows updates that could potentially cause an issue. And in the end, we came 
to a couple of very salient conclusions. So what's actually going on? There's no way to definitively say, but we've got some theories. The first culprit seems to be the base and how it interacts with the IHS on AM5 processors. If we look at the contact pattern from the new dark rocks, it's right in the middle, much like the D15 and away from the hot running chiplets. Noctua has been able to mitigate this issue by moving the pressure point downwards with their offset mounting kit. But according to Be Quiet, an offset mount wasn't even on their radar. The heat pipes also stand out. Two of them don't even touch the processor, while two others only make partial contact. That leaves only three that can fully transfer heat away from the CPU. This is one of those situations where a smaller number of larger heat pipes might have been beneficial. Another theory is of course fan limitation. It could be, even with Be Quiet's pedigree, that these fans simply don't push enough air to effectively cool the heat sinks. In order to test that, what did we do? We took Probably one of the best 140 millimeter fans on the market right now, the Be Quiet Silent Wings Pro 4, strapped literally with elastics, strapped two of them to the Dark Rock Elite and basically let them run. And the results, they were pretty eye opening. Even with two epic 140 millimeter fans, we were barely able to make a dent in the Elite's temperature numbers at a normalized 38 decibels. Now this could mean the stock fans are pretty damn good, or it could point towards there being an underlying bottleneck somewhere in the heatsink's design. So let's run the fans at full speed to eliminate that variable, which is a screaming 49 decibels at 2400 RPM, so significantly louder than any air cooler we've tested so far. Even with that, the numbers barely improve. This is sort of a smoking gun, and it could mean that even with a perfect mount, heat isn't being effectively transferred from the AM5 CPU into the cooler's contact plate and up into its heat pipes. So here's the deal with the Pro 5 and the Elite. Personally, I think they look absolutely stunning, especially the Elite with its glowing RGB if you're into that thing. They also have what is arguably some of the best fans ever mounted to a CPU cooler. I mean, you can argue all day whether or not these are superior to what Noct was offering, but one thing is for certain, I'm sure that these will outlast all the throwaway garbage that a lot of other manufacturers are pairing with their heat sinks to get them to lower price points. They also have just incredible build quality and an intuitive installation process, but that is where the benefits really stop. Because other than a few glimmers of greatness from the Elite on our Intel platform, the results are disappointing considering these are two of the most expensive air coolers on the planet right now. If Be Quiet's sole benchmark was to beat the Pro 4, mission accomplished. But that cooler was a low watermark on modern systems to begin with. So I really have to wonder if they even analyzed the competition's performance on the latest CPUs from Intel and AMD. Somehow I think they might have just missed that competitive analysis or they looked at the current reviewer spectrum and said, hey, all these guys are testing on LGA 1200 or earlier or AM4, so we're just gonna do the same thing. But we've proven time and again, modern CPUs are very different beasts and our results focus exclusively on those. And no, that absolutely doesn't make other people's results wrong. They just have a different data set than we do. The fact of the matter is simply there are many top tier coolers which outperform the new dark rocks while costing a hell of a lot less. And those also tend to be more compact, have better native memory compatibility, and can easily swap out their fans. These, along with the Assassin 4 original D15 and its replacement, makes me wonder if $100 plus air air coolers from the big brands is the new normal. And if that's the case, they'll all need to start marketing features over actual performance. So like I said at the beginning of this video, I went into this review with quite a bit of bias. Like a lot of you guys, I wanted these to be great. I wanted them to set a new high watermark in 2023 for air coolers and they absolutely didn't. But look, maybe some of you guys see some tangible benefits to these outside of the performance numbers that we're reporting. Maybe you love the looks, maybe you love something else. Let me know in the comments below. Anyways, I'm Mike with Hardware Canucks and I am going to see you guys in the next one. Have a great day.